Hey, what's up? What up, what up? It's, uh, we're here again. Congratulations, podcast. It's the ninth episode. Um, and, uh, this one's getting out a little, I got a little bit of some aggressive tweets and Instagram comments saying that, uh, I didn't, uh, I, it's late, but it's not late. You know why? Cause I always said that it was going to come out by Tuesday morning and you'll have it on the way to work Tuesday. So that's what my promise is to you. And guess what? I'm going to break that promise probably sometime. Sometimes I'm on the road and maybe I'll be out there for a long time. And I promise you, I will have it up before your drive to work on Tuesday. But I will most likely break that promise, okay? But nonetheless, we're here, and uh, you guys are listening right now. So you don't have to complain anymore, and that's awesome. Uh, I am back from the road. I was in, uh, man, I did Virginia Beach on Wednesday night which was cool. Uh, I did... Then I went to... Um, fucking... What the hell is it called? Uh, it's North Carolina, but it's called uh, Raleigh. And I did that. Shows there. And then I went to Greensboro, North Carolina. I went to... I went to... Um, Virginia Beach, which is cool. I hadn't been there in eight like eight years. I opened up for Joe Coy um, there like eight years ago. And it's a great club, and it was very, f- very, uh, very fun show. I can't remember uh, the the town's nice and cool, but I, I didn't I didn't get to spend time. Sometimes you go to these places and you don't get to spend time really uh, because you're just kind of tired as shit. I flew. I my flight was at, by the way my flight was at five thirty a.m., which I didn't even know they had flights at five thirty a.m. Uh, and I got in at like 3.30 because no direct flights goes to Virginia Beach, of course. And then um, I, when I was in Virginia Beach, I did my show. And then I had to go to bed because I had to go right back to, I had to go to, um, what do you call it? Raleigh. And Raleigh was great. Dude, this comedy club in Raleigh is called Good Nights. And it's fucking awesome, man. I mean, people should shoot specials there. It's really, it's smaller, you know, than like a theater. But man, the crowds were awesome. Like, uh, I'll definitely go back there. I love Raleigh. Uh, and it's cool. It was like a college town. And I was joking around on stage, man. Dude, they have more runners in that city than I've... I-, I can't even believe it. It's like the whole fucking place is a track and field. Everybody's whizzing by and you're walking and you feel like a fucking piece of shit. Because you're just walking. And they're running by in like a, a UNC shirt and a fucking pink and pink short shorts. Um, and... The shows were awesome. And then I went to Greensboro. And when I got to Greensboro, I was immediately sad because it it was, first of all, overcast. And I don't, that was one of those places where I was like, I, I don't know who lives here. I can't imagine living here. There was like, he, I was like, I said to the guy who was fucking the, the, the owner of the, of the venue I played, he picked me up in his fucking Porsche, dude. He was it's a Jersey in Greensboro. Dude, he came out. <laughs> By the way, I love this guy. I've been texting him. But um, he, he picked me up at the fucking hotel and he pulled up in his Panamera or whatever the fuck that, those cars are called. And uh, I was waiting for like a an SUV or something. And he po- pops out with like a chain. And he's like, hey, I'm going to do the accent because it's fun. He didn't really have it like this, but he was like, hey, use Chris. And I was like, yeah. He's like, come on. And I went in the car. and He fucking was jerseyed out. And I was like, how the fuck did you wind up in Greensboro? And he, and I was like, wait, a girl, huh? And he said, yeah, like 24 years ago. Dude, did the venue, but the fucking town is so weird, man. I can't believe people live everywhere. And then I got there and the venue was was kind of cool. Like it had like this green room that this green room that was huge and it had fucking like roped off shit for no reason nobody was there. And then when I got to the venue I was like, "Oh man, it was pretty cavernous." And cavernous if you don't know about stand up, 
cavernous rooms and rooms with big ceilings are bad for comedy because the laughs get drowned out and it's a little bit big. And my opener was like, I could tell he wasn't having a good time on stage. And then I went on stage and I had the fucking best time. And I told Greensboro that I was going to come back. So now I have to. Uh, even though place makes me it's just sad. I kicked a guy out though uh, because he kept on yelling shit out. I, I kick a guy out in four minutes. Like I started, they started doing like telling me to do the drunk girls bit. And I was like, yo, you got to stop. You got to be quiet. And then he kept going and doing it. I said, yo, yo, security, you got to get this guy the fuck out of here. And everybody started clapping and they kicked him out. And then after the show, I realized that his girl and him fought the security. The girl was scratching the security and was like, fuck you. Fuck you. And my opener mic was out there and she was like, you piece of shit. And I was like, eh, thank God we threw you out. That happened in Raleigh too. I didn't even know that people got thrown out, but people were like lighting up my Instagram afterwards. I got off stage and people were commenting on different Instagrams like, by the way, your security fucking sucks. They threw us out for laughing. Eh, eh, no, they didn't. Dude, there's a video that plays in front of a lot of the improv I don't think they actually have it anymore, but it would be like, don't heckle, don't take pictures. And Todd Glass is there, comedian. And he was saying, and everyone who gets kicked out says, we were just laughing. And it's true. You don't get kicked out for laughing. You absolutely don't get kicked out for laughing. Because that's what you're supposed to do. You know, you don't, you get kicked out for laughing at a comedy cl- club like you get kicked out of a gym for running on the treadmill. That's how you, that's why. You ever get kicked out running out treadmill at the gym? No. It's because it doesn't have. If you're at a comedy club, you laugh, you get kicked out. Guess what? Guess what? You're in an alternate universe. Guess what? You're in a different dimension. Because it doesn't happen on Earth in this dimension. Or is it that you're drunk and you're not going to remember what the fuck happened? Okay? I threw him out and thank God. Hey, also... If I throw someone out, or if someone is thrown out, I even throw the people out. I even throw the first people out. If someone's thrown out and then you're the kind of person that fucking comments on Instagram, Instagram, fuck you, fuck you, you piece of shit, your security sucks, you shouldn't go anywhere. You should stay. You should stay at your house. And you shouldn't even have an Instagram, let alone be out in public. So... <clears throat> Had some rowdy ones in uh, North Carolina. But whatever. Uh, Flew back today and fucking... uh, Connection was tight as shit. My travel agent gave me like a 12-minute connection. I was getting so steaming mad the first flight. I was like, this fucking guy gave me a 12-minute connection. I'm never going to make it to the fucking plane. I'm going to have to stay in fucking Charlotte. I had to take a flight from... um, Greensboro to Charlotte, which is like a 14 minute drive. <laughs> so I had to fly. They made me fly to get it there because there's no direct flight, obviously, from Greensboro to LA because nobody in the world would ever be traveling from Greensboro to LA or LA to Greensboro because where is it? So um, I, get, I, I rushed onto the second plane in Charlotte and I, I, I walked in, you know, it was my boarding zone was going. So I was there and people were waiting there and somebody goes, hey, Chris. And I was like, what's up, man? And, uh, you know, I was just with my ego. I was like, oh, it's a fan. And then he was like, where's Mike? And I was like, oh, wow, he's a big fan. He even knows my opener. And then he was, I was like, oh, he's on his way. And then um, he says, yeah, yeah, we were in Sarasota. We just made this connection flight too. And I was like, oh, this guy is a fucking comedian. Because <clears throat> he said, we, uh, and I realized I recognized him. And, and then I was like, oh, I wonder who he's opening for because, uh, you know, I, I was assuming someone else was already on a flight. I get on the flight and it's fucking Sinbad, who is like, I love, I fucking love Sinbad, dude. That guy makes fucking, is so funny. And I got on and I was like, and I was like, oh shit, I'm going to try and do the thing where like, you know, I'm going to say, hey, because maybe he knows me because we're both comedians, you know? But I was like, if I do it and then he fucking... <laughs> Is like, what's up, man? You a fan? I'd be like, es, a heart will be my heart will be es, broken. So I fucking get up there and I I make eye contact with him and I'm like, hey, what's up, dude? Uh, it's Chris, man. It's nice to see you. And he was like, yeah, good to see you, man. And he he was like, uh, there were 
they were telling stories about you. Uh, uh, somebody named some some name some guy was still, somebody I should have known. I guess he was like he was telling a story about you, man. I was like, oh fuck, I hope it was okay. He was like, hey man, it's never okay. <laughs> Yeah, so, I mean, I, you know, he was joking and shit, but I was like, you know, it was just a cool Sinbad react. It's Sinbad interaction. And he had a face towel. He had the towel he has on stage when he wipes his face because he's so sweaty. He had it on him at the airport. That shit. And he had the leopard one. It was amazing. Dude, that's so dope when someone so them, they're even them in the airport, you know? It would be like if fucking Al Pacino was at the airport with a fucking, with a glazed stare look, just like, oh, where's my flight? You'd be like, oh, and he's in like a fucking burgundy suit. <laughs> Where the fuck is my flight? That, it, I would, I love it when people are so them. Or like if MC Hammer was getting to his flight and he was doing the sidestepping with the baggy pants and he was trying to get, and he was almost late for his flight, so he was going really fast and people were screaming, go Hammer, go Hammer, go. <laughs> That, I would be like, ah, that's awesome. You know? Um, I was on the plane. They didn't have fucking plugs on the plane. They didn't, they barely, hey, get rid of your planes from the fucking 1930s. Okay? Get rid of that shit. Hey, who made this plane? The Wright Brothers hand by hand? Huh, American Airlines? Um... And this woman was in front of me, and she was fucking so mad. She was so mad, and she wanted to talk to the... Oh, by the way, wasn't it American Airlines? Who? who what was the um, one that didn't let the le- girl with the leggings on? American? I think that... I thought it was American. With the, with the leggings? Whatever, he's figuring it out, but... United. Oh, it was United. That's right. Because Keith, uh, my buddy texted me. Uh, United is fucking awful. Okay. And they delay flights all the time. And they kick someone off for wearing leggings. Right? That's what they're saying. And my question to United is, well, Why? You were, people wear leggings. Anything you could wear at Starbucks, you could wear at a fucking... Ooh, you the fashion police? Hey, United. When, when they said, hey, a girl got kicked off because she wasn't dressed uh, up to code in United, I immediately thought, oh, her tits were out. Like, out. Out, I mean. Out. I mean, even if somebody walked into a Starbucks with a bra on, you'd be like, that's weird. With just a bra. You'd be like, it's weird. But like... I don't know. Maybe if there were kids there, you'd be like, yo, man, maybe go put on a top. <laughs> but like leggings, she had pants on. You, got, She got kicked out for wearing pants. United fucking sucks, dude. I've never meant anything more than what I mean right now. United fucking sucks. They're run by cats. I feel like fucking cats are, the, there's a kitty that's the fucking CEO of United Airlines. And and there are a few cats under him, but also humans. And the humans and the cats sit around the table. And the, the main CEO kitty is like on a chair. And there are other cats on the table. And then fucking there are other humans around. And they're like, so uh, how do we run this company better? And they all kind of have to look at the CEO cat because... You know, he runs a company, and even the humans think it's stupid, but it's like, <laughs> but it's still the fucking guy who runs the company, even though it's a cat. <laughs> and then the cat will just be like, Meow. and then they'll be like, I don't, I don't know. And the, and, the, and one of the adults will be like, I don't, I don't know. And then he'll lick his wrist. The cat will lick his wrist. And then that's why they're fucking delayed all the time. Fuck you, United. Straight up. Hey, United, turn around. <laughs> hey, United, everything's great, but why are you facing me? Your, uh, your customer service implies that right now you should turn around. 
All right. Hey, United, dude, why is your nose in the direction facing my nose? Make our noses point in the same direction and turn round. Dude, fuck United. United fucking blows donkey dicks. Okay. It's horrible. And everybody knows it. And if you're a fucking guy who got all the mileage and the plus and the fucking gold members and you're on the, you know, United, change it. Switch it up. I don't care if you're gold status. I'd rather fly in a fucking crate with chickens than United. If I knew it was going to be on time, I'd rather fly in a crate with chickens under the fucking passenger luggage shit or whatever. Anyone who works at United, line up, turn around. Seriously. Fucking for real. Just do your job. It's weird to be in these hotels. Um, Like, I was in three different hotels this week. And to watch, like, regular TV. Like, (laughs) this sounds a little elitist. Whatever. Fuck on. I don't care. Like, to not watch... I mean, not really, though. It's not really, like... Like, to not watch, like, like uh, Netflix or Hulu or, like, a show when I want to watch it, you know? Like, if you have your house and you're chilling... I mean, people... I feel like most people have... Ne- well, most people... No, that's, I don't know how... What the fucking whole... Uh, how America is. Probably, probably not. Probably most people have regular TV, but... A lot of people just have Netflix and don't have the fucking TV. Um... But I, uh, you know, watch it. I, I watch Netflix or TV or whatever the fuck. But when you, but I'll record the shows. Like I don't watch, my point is I don't watch commercials. But when I'm on the road, you got to turn on a fucking TV. And first of all, in a hotel, hey, hotels, how come when I turn on your TV, it takes 12 minutes? Dude, when you turn on a fucking, first of all, hate the homepage channel. You turn on, it goes like this. And you're still waiting, by the way. It's still black. And and then you maybe hit it again. You're like, Did I turn it on? And you go to hit it again, and then you turn it off. And you notice because right before you hit it, it turns, the red blinker turns on, and you're like, oh, fuck, it was just on, and then it's off. Okay, you're like, all right, fuck. And then you wait a few seconds because you're like, I gotta wait a few seconds to let it gestate in the offness. <laughs> you know what I mean? And then so then you're like, all right, so this is probably a good amount of time to wait. Now I'm going to try to turn on again. And you turn on again. And you're waiting again. And you're like, all right. God damn it. And then the hotel channel comes on. And it's not it's not the loudest thing in the world. It's louder than that. It's like it'll be a girl taking off a fucking... Uh, shawl or sh- sachet, whatever you fucking call it, one of those pool wear fucking bullshit things that girls get. Like, I'm going to cover my fucking tits and ass, but not really. You could still see them. And she's taking one of those, and she dives into a pool, and the music is like, ding, 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 ding. And it's like, here at the Sheraton, you're going to be extremely uncomfortable when either this TV turns on because it'll hurt your ears, or... Someone will call you from because the phone rings louder than an air siren. No hotel, no hotel phone rings this loud. That's all. That's all you need. You know why? You human. It's never that. This is how that it goes. Ring that fucking loud. And it and and the TV's turning on and then and then so I'm watching so I'll always go to the I'll find out the fucking I'll find HLN because I want to watch Forensic Files. That's the only thing that that's on. I know that's a safe bet in my road travels because it's on 24 hours a fucking day. HLN should be called the fucking Forensic Files channel. And that show is the shit because it's like candy. If you like that fucking murder shit. It's like candy, and it's always the same guy who does the voice. By the way, he died last year, but everybody gets killed with fucking succissional choline. (laughs) 
It's it's always successional calling. And the guy will be like, they found trace amounts of successional calling. And every time he says it, I want to shit my bed. They found trace amounts of successional calling. First of all, there's already too many syllables in successional calling, and this guy adds more syllables to successional calling. Successional calling. And shitting. Dude, someone could get hit over the ba- over the head with a baseball bat, and they'll be like, the- <laughs> what knocked him out was a bludgeoning to the head on a, on a Louisville slugger. That was found in the basement later, but what killed him were traces found of successional calling. I feel like they put that shit in there. They put successional calling in the people so if people so they can do the show forensic files at them uh, and, and make it and make it happen and make it fucking. They're like they're trying to like the makers of successional calling. They're trying. They're like you know we got to get this successional calling drug out there. I think it makes your body go limp or, or like it's supposed to pass you out or, and paralyze you. And if you put too much, then you fucking just stop breathing because your lungs, lungs can't work. Took a dark turn there, huh? Uh, yeah. So anyway. Next to her bed, there was green liquid. It was LaCroix. With traces of successional calling. They found trace amounts. Sometimes the guy will just go to a different planet on his fucking... They found trace amounts of successional calling. Why is he fucking Optimus Prime all of a sudden? Roll out. Autobots, let's go. Time to fight... Megatron, he's been killing everyone with successional calling. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, lasers can stun them, but what we need to get them with are trace amounts of successional calling. (laughs) Hey, Trance... Transformers, more than meets the eye. Autobots and Decepticons, roll out. Oh, he, oh he's just a needle. Bring him. <laughs> he transformed into a needle. Bring him. Roll out. A needle full of... Successional calling. <laughs> Autobots and Decepticons and Autobots and Autobots and Decepticons. That guy died last year who did the voice. I fucking, he died last year and I looked him up and I, I looked him up on YouTube about the fucking, because I was like, I just typed in success and all and it was the first thing that came up, obviously. And the first thing that came up for real though was, I forget his name, the voice of Forensic Files. Uh, it was a video to, thing called whatever his name was, and then it, it had a dash, and it said the voice. Ah, uh, imagine being so dope at your job that they call you what like you use, like to do your job. Like if you were a fucking mover, somebody called you arms. <laughs> this guy's name was the. Vo- they called it the voice. And even his regular voice was like that. They were like, so what's your get your insp- inspiration? And he was like, trace amounts of successional calling. Um, so I watched that Forensic Files. But the one, thing, the one thing that you have to do about watching those TVs, Peter Thomas was his name. Eh, it's a regular name. Peter Thomas, you know, definitely in the Witness Protection Co- Program. Definitely because he fucking murdered people with successional calling for the mob. Hey, we gotta get Peter Thomas. No, whatever his name was. We gotta get the voice. 
We got the voice. We got a. You got a problem? We got. We know somebody who could deal with it. Yeah, we call him the voice. How's he kill? How's he kill the people? It makes it look like you know you just drank some La Croix. He, he hits your head over the. What he does is he hits you over the head with a baseball bat. But that's not what kills you. you know what kills you? This place, this stuff called fucking successional calling. Successional calling. And then he fucking got caught by the FBI and had to relocate <laughs> to wherever they fucking they they record the forensic files, which I guess is probably in Burbank. And his name is Peter Thomas now, and he's got little kids, and they're fucking. Uh, they sound the same, like baby fucking. They're baby voices. Um. But you got to watch commercials. That's the thing about... That's what I was trying to get at. You got to watch commercials um, to fucking... Uh, if you're going to watch TV at a hotel because they don't have DVR or whatever. One time I was at one TV and it had... Net, I was at one hotel. Was at net, it had Netflix. And I was like, is this the future? Um, But you got to watch... Uh, commercials and uh, <laughs> and uh, you gotta watch commercials and it's fucking sh- yo there let me just say a blanket thing here and I, I you know I saw a commercial that made me laugh maybe the other day maybe I did it maybe it didn't make me laugh but I went like this <laughs> but hey ad guys and commercial guys and people who are making the commercials step your goddamn game up they're awful the only ones that are not awful are the ones that are fucking like local commercials that you can watch because they're so so bad but at least you're like "Ah, ah, these are entertaining you know what i mean you watch and you're like oh i can't believe they made that that's a real person but like don't do the fucking wham (laughs) wham Uh, I'm tired of washing windows and doing laundry. Meep, meep. Honey. Boing, 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 boing. <sniffs> Whoops. Shit all over the place. Guess we got to use Windex next time. <laughs> Fuck you. Fuck you. After watching that, I want to drink a successional choline. Dude, commercials are fucking terrible, man. They're fucking terrible. When I'm driving, <laughs> they always got that laugh in the beginning. My friends, <laughs> boy, you know, my kids came home the other day. <laughs> Fuck that laugh. Nothing is that funny. There are things more funny and less funny, but if you're laughing this hard at something, You're a fucking Jim Carrey character, okay? Nothing's that funny. (laughs) Crackers. (laughs) Why are there so many crumbs? (laughs) Honey! There he goes again. (laughs) No. Success at O'Colleen. Drink it if you're one of us. <laughs> Fuck you with that laugh. I hate it. Step your fucking game up. If you're selling... What are you going to sell? A t-shirt? Fucking just hawk it, dude. Dude, if there was a commercial that came on TV and it was like, t-shirt, it was just some fucking fat Italian guy just like, T-shirts, T-shirts for sale. Get your T-shirts. Go get them at Ross. You got T-shirts at Ross. I'd fucking fly to Ross. I'd go, I'd buy all the T-shirts up because I'd respect that shit. Buy these shirts. Do that. Some guy. Some weirdo. Instead, you get some fucking guy 
with glasses on that's kind of good looking, that's not really good looking, but he's definitely got like frizzy hair and like a beard a little bit, kind of describing myself. But, uh, and he's like at a dinner and something goes wrong and he's like, check please. And I'm supposed to fucking laugh at that and then go run out and buy fucking, you know, lens crafters. Eat my whole dick. No. Make it better. Make the commercials better. Dude, if you're going to have me watch... And you know what? Hey, guess what? The Super Bowl commercials are fucking atrocious too. I know I'm the fucking minority here. And I know people... By the way, if you're the kind of person that's like, I watch the Super Bowl for the commercials, here comes a fierce fuck you. Fuck you. All right? Watch the, watch the Super Bowl for the Super Bowl. Also, don't watch the Super Bowl. Okay? But if you're the fucking kind of janky-ass motherfucker that sits on a couch and is like, oh, good, the commercial's bye. Welcome to my house. Now leave. Dude. It just drives me nuts. Uh, so, yeah. Same thing with... Uh, Sponsored ads on like uh, uh, online. It's funny that some of them say sponsored. And uh, and they and like we know, you know, if I got a fucking Starbucks in my hand on Instagram, you better believe Starbucks is fucking paying me for it. Although maybe not unless I love it. Uh, but but yeah don't why why does it have to be corny why does it have to be corny that's what i don't get i don't get why it has to be corny why can't you just say this is the product you want you buy this you buy it hey buy it get me to do it i'll do it i'll do it i don't want to really be on commercials but i'll do it if you let me take tide how about tide let me do your fucking commercials me me i do it I do the whole thing. I direct it. I write it. I don't even. I, I, I show up. I wear what I want to wear. I got my beard the length I want to have it, and I got my hair the way I want it, with no fucking makeup or touch up or bullshit. And I sit there in a chair and I say, "Hey, you want to get your clothes clean? You get tied. That's what you do. All right? Yeah, you can get the other products, but don't get tied. And that's it. That's a commercial. You don't even need thirty seconds. You know that. You know how fucking weird and good that would be. It would be good." Yeah, you might lose like fucking some people in Des Moines or some shit. But all of a sudden, you're the fucking weirdo brand. And y- yeah, you see what Tide do- did? Oh, uh, yeah. Get fucking Greg Kinnear to be like, I wash all my underwear with Tide. I wash all my pants with Tide. I wash all my shirts with Tide. I wash everything with Tide. Have him say that. Those four lines. That's it. That's the commercial. He's not funny about it. He's just being serious. Greatest commercial I've ever seen. I was just, I just made a better commercial than any fucking commercial I've seen in fucking years. And you can say that's con- conceited, but it's not. It's just fucking commercials are uh, 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 travesties. You know what they're like? They're like the scene in fucking Jurassic Park or Jurassic World when fucking Chris Pratt sees that big ass T Rex and he's like, oh shit. That's what I, that's what I fucking feel when I see a commercial. Ah, oh, fuck. Don't make them. You don't need a team. Fuck your team. You don't need a team to make a fucking commercial. You need a, a, a fucking person. Hey, you making a commercial or you the Jaguars? Hey, I have a question at agencies. Are you making a commercial? Are you trying to sell a product or are you the Mets? Because if you're not the Mets, don't be a team. Yeah, man. Drives me nutsos. Sponsor content. I was on Instagram the other day. Hey, man. Uh, so all of a sudden, DJ Khaled's baby is the fucking number one thing. Isn't that amazing? This guy fucking... 
has a squirty boner in a chick and a baby comes out and now the fucking baby runs the internet. If I got to see another picture of DJ Khaled's baby, by the way, great. Have a baby, be happy about it. Awesome. Uh, but DJ Khaled said his baby was a producer. Nah. What's he producing? Vomit and cries? Nah. Not producer. Oh, he's going to produce music? Cool. Does the music sound like this? No? Then it's he's not a producer. Okay? I mean, dude. It's a baby. It's a baby. It's a fucking infant. You can't wipe your ass. You can't produce music. It's my rule. That's my rule. Yeah, uh, I mean, yeah, it's funny. I get it. I get what DJ Khaled's doing. I, I fucking think, I honestly think DJ Khaled, if there's a genius on social media, it's him. The guy's unbelievable. And honestly, the the tracks he produces, some of them are fucking hot fire, dude. Sometimes he does it, and then he's like, another one. And I'm like, you know what? Actually, another one. Another one. Baby, baby's gonna come out and baby's gonna be like, another wow. That's gonna be the first uh, fucking words. Another wow. DJ Cal's gonna be like, here's a cookie. And the baby's gonna eat it and then the baby's gonna be like, another wow. <laughs> hey, oh, by the way, are they making fucking uh, The Lion King with real lions? That's what I heard. Somebody said live action Lion King. That's going to end in murders and deaths. John Favreau is directing Lion King live action. Somebody said live action, not cartoons, not CGI. I mean, come on, dude. That was like in Gladiator when Russell Crowe was like, when they were saying to Russell Crowe that he shouldn't play, <laughs> he shouldn't play soccer on his off days of, of Gladiator because they didn't want to risk him getting injured, injured. And he was like, you got me fighting with fucking lions. Worst New Zealand accent ever. Isn't that where he's from? I don't know. You got me fighting with lions. You worried about me kicking a ball around? I don't know the difference between Australia uh, accent and New Zealand. Sorry. Sounds good, right? It's healthy soda. Drinking it. Yeah. Um, um, the Lion King with real lions is like, just make the, have them be CGI. It's got to be CGI. It must have been wrong. It must have been wrong. It can't, there's no way they are going to have like two lions and shit and then just CGI the mouths, I guess. I guess they could do that. But that seems like a fucking thing that they would do in 1991 with Steve Gutenberg. I'm surprised if John Favreau was going to do that shit. Um, but fuck, I'll see it. I mean, Lion King's awesome. Lion King's one of those things that is, is very awesome that people though, people like to pretend like they like it more than they actually like it. And I love Lion. I, I like Lion King. It's a great movie, but, uh, you know, when I got to hear some fucking chick that's like 28, oh, they're remaking the Lion King. I just like, I want to fucking eat a whole bunch of donuts. You know, just so something else is happening. It's like annoying. It's a, it's a, you know what I mean? They're acting like it's curing cancer or some shit. Like it's great. It's fucking, ama- it's great, but it's a movie. There's shit like that, that people do though. They, they, there's like the thing that comes up that in mean, Lion King obviously is way past, you know, I mean, the would that come out in fucking 90 something, but, uh, um, the new thing is like, is like that it's actually kind of, let me actually talk about this because I ate some the other day and I keep trying with this shit, but kale, I keep trying with kale and it, Hey, you know what? It's fucking bad. Okay. I don't give a shit what you put on it. Put on fucking vinaigrette, put on fucking ranch dressing. I don't give a shit. Put on Skittles. 
It, it fucking tastes like my end table. Kale sucks, okay? Kale fucking sucks. All right, and people like to flip out about kale, and I don't know how it is in the middle of the country, but in L.A. and in New York, there's these fucking kale places popping up or whatever the fuck. Would you like it with kale? And then, I don't know. Do you have anything with flavor instead? I, I just—it's not good. You get the brown rice, get the fucking um, even get the uh, quinoa. That's fine, but kale is fucking bullshit. It tastes like toilet paper, and, and and I don't like when the fucking when the, the people get on the bandwagon and it's like, oh yeah, that's a thing now. Uh, it makes me, and I tried with it because I know it's, it's healthy, but also they make it seem like it's so healthy that like it, it will fucking like, they, they make it seem like, like it's so healthy that you're going to fucking like you, you, you can like, it'll help you not get like it'll cure cancer. That's how they feel. Make you like, well, you know, also though, if you got some HIV, eat some kale. That's not what it is. It's just, it's just fucking, it's, it, it's good for you. But people go overboard with this shit. And that, I want everybody to calm down about it, okay? That's what I want. I want everybody to calm down about it. You know? Because guess what? I'd rather eat a fucking bowl of chocolate than that. That's what it is. When you start acting like a bowl of kale is better than a bowl of chocolate, that's when you got to absolutely turn around. What did I t- I tweeted about this today earlier. I saw it on Twitter. I saw two things on Twitter, man. One was Which one should I start with? One was um, one was the fucking. I'll start with the one I first did. The fucking. I retweeted this thing about how they made a female somewhere. They made a female, uh, quote unquote, traffic light, and either they're working on it or they're doing it or they did it or something. And the light is a fucking body with a dress on instead of the regular guy walking with the two legs and the arms apart. It's a female. There's a female one now. Now, the the thing that, first of all, what I will love is there is somebody in the world, some man in the world that will see that and literally think, oh, okay, well, the females are crossing now. I should stay here. <laughs> and 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 I'm not, I know it's funny. But that will happen with some fucking moron. And that is great. Okay? That's the upside of it. Is that you get to understand that the, the people, there is going, <laughs> there will be probably more than once, some guy somewhere that sees that and thinks, and, and goes to walk and then thinks, oh, wait, hold on. Do only females get to walk now? And legitimately. That's the upside. All the other things about it are, Dumb as shit downsides, okay? Hey, don't change the goddamn traffic light. There's bigger problems in the fucking world. Number one, and that's the most obvious one. But number two, how did they not understand that if they say, oh, these are for female now, and they put a dress on it, that that's offensive? Now they're saying, oh, because women wear dresses. And you got to wear a dress if you're a woman. Plus, men wear dresses, you fucking idiots. They fucked themselves harder. They turned around themselves and just sat on a fucking rod. There wasn't even someone else involved. There wasn't even somebody that was like, turn around. They were just like, I guess I got to turn around now and sat on a fucking lamppost. Dude. That's real dumb. These fucking idiot, you know, and those are the kind of people that were like, well, you know, everyone's a snowflake bullshit or whatever the fuck. Such a dumb fuck thing. And then I tweeted something else about how Wonder Woman, what the fuck was it? It was Wonder Woman, the movie Wonder Woman, the new one has a poster out and she's like swinging her sword 
and she doesn't have a fucking armpit hair. And she's, it's, they're like, she's from an island. She would have armpit hair. Wonder Woman's lack of armpit hair sparks feminist debate. Oh. Right here. With palpable excitement surrounding the film's release, the latest trailer, which can be viewed below, has sparked new controversy. Through careful analysis, the internet has exposed a perhaps not so wonderful aspect of DC Comics' newest incarnation of the classic girl power superheroine. She has no armpit hair. That's the actual fucking paragraph. While the moment lasts all of a millisecond, not to mention the reason we can see her armpits is because she's throwing a truck over her head like a rag doll. It's a millisecond that has heated, that has set off a heated debate. Wow. That's hilarious. It's not enough that, first of all, she's a superhero. She doesn't exist. She threw a fucking truck over her head. The weird part about that is not that she doesn't have hair under her armpit. It's that she's an alien and she flies around in an invisible jet. What are they mad at? If she had armpit hair, then what? It's a fucking cartoon. They're making a cartoon. Literally. Look at the quote. She's not going... She's an... What is it? Amazonian? Um, It's not going to be like real Amazons. We always try to make everyone happy, but we can't. That's what, uh, also she's a demigod, they're saying. So how do we know? Maybe they're born without hair, right? That's what they say in this article. The article is nytlive.newyorktimes.com. I guess it's in, it was in the New York Times or something. And there are people that are like, what the fuck? You shouldn't, you know, you shouldn't do, imagine, imagine seeing that. First of all, it's for a millisecond for sure. Like, there's no way there's a close-up of her armpit in the trailer or in the movie. Imagine seeing that whole trailer with all of the fantastic shit that's going on. She's throwing a truck over her head. I mean, you know, she's awesome. She's action-packed. She's kicking ass, beating the shit out of people. She's beautiful. She's fucking whipping around Probably Batman and Superman are in the goddamn trailer because they can't make a superhero movie without making more superheroes in it. And, and 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 to fucking see that for a millisecond and then get heated. And then get heated. And not and first of all to even see it, but then to be like, not then not to be like, eh, fuck it. Oh, uh, fuck it. She's throwing a truck. And then after, because that was the trailer of the movie, so you're sitting in the movie theater. Then you watch the movie you went to see. Then you got home and still had to fucking tweet about it. Oh, I am not leaning my political beliefs in this at all, but that is why Trump won. <laughs> That's why he won. And I'm not saying he should have or shouldn't have. I'm not going to talk political on this fucking podcast, but that's why he won. So if you're mad he won, you're the fucking, that's it, man. That You did that. Stop. To, uh, uh, I don't know. I, I, somebody uh, got mad at me for fucking, I did a joke on a, in, 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 uh, incorrigible. My last Netflix special um, about uh, someone was fat in the story I was telling her. She was like, she was fat. Now, I know, you know, don't get upset, but she was fat. Some people are fat, and she was fat. I didn't make her fat. She was, you know, and uh, I, I, didn't remember, I don't even remember what I said specifically, but somebody tweeted the other day, 
wow, Chris D'Elia makes fat jokes in his special? Like, I didn't really. I just said that. And then somebody was like, you, f you know, I was like, uh, I was like, yo, I, I got to make fun of everybody equally. Like, I don't give a fuck. I don't think about it when I do it. I just, just do it. You're a comedian. You just fucking do it. You, you make fun of the person and you got to have the liberty to do that because that's our job. If you don't do that, then the m comedy becomes fucking less than. And so I wrote back, I got, you got to, I just make fun of whoever, you know? And then the lady was like, fucking crackers or some shit. And I was like, oh, racist. Cool. And then fucking, she was like, I, uh, it's a fact. You can't be racist against white people. And I know this argument. I know this argument. I know it. This is like, oh, has, has anyone held you back from uh, a job because of being called a cracker? I get it. I get the fucking argument. I understand. But you can hate a group of a race, and if you hate them, then you're racist. I don't give a fuck what people say, all right? That's what it is. I, you know, in my opinion, there can be a race, you can be racist against a fucking white person because if you hate white people, you're fucking racist. That's it. Uh, you want to say no racism doesn't exist like that against white people? Fine. But I don't, I don't know if I believe it. You have to fucking convince me a little bit harder than that than just calling me cracker and saying you can't be fucking racist. And then people were tweeting me back, just these social justice warriors. I failed to see the racism in this that she called you cracker. Have you ever, you, you, mm, mm, and I should, no, this, this is Twitter, you know, these fucking jerk off motherfuckers behind their keyboards just Type in. You can't fucking write your opinion if you fucking dicks out uh, in your fucking chair in your TV room, you know, on your laptop. That's the rule, okay? People are so fucking sensitive. It's very weird because most of the people don't really give a shit. They just think it's the right thing to do. And that's fucking poison, dude. Do it. Don't do it unless you fucking mean it. You know? I understand. Like, <clears throat> God, I hate talking about this shit. It's so annoying anyway. But like privilege and all that shit, I get it. White privilege, I get it. No, I get the argument. But like, mean, mean what, mean it. You know what I'm talking about? Like, mean it if you're going to fucking, if you're going to say, if you're going to say, oh, if you believe, oh, people shouldn't, uh, uh, people should not, uh, ab abortion should be legal, bleh, tweeting it isn't enough. Don't fucking tweet it. Don't tweet it. Just fucking do something about it instead. If you're not going to do anything about it, then don't fucking do anything about it. Just sit down because that's what everyone's been fucking doing for years and years and years and years. And just because you have a goddamn computer doesn't mean you're the fucking president. Does this make sense? I don't even know. I don't even care, to be totally honest. That's a real problem with me. I thought I was a sociopath a little bit because I, I had trouble caring about stuff. And I took a test and it said I wasn't. So I'm all good. The test was on the internet. I just don't like... Uh, I don't like these fucking... I don't like these fake ass motherfuckers. Like, you know, I like listening to Tupac. I don't like these fake ass bitches. Can't stand fake ass bitches. You lying ass fucking whatever it is. I don't know, but I, I, I'm, I'm running out of steam here. I'm tired and it's fucking, I just got back from whatever. North Carolina. Uh, and I think I'm done. Oh, I could look at the pot. I could look at the, oh, I wonder if the guy gamed the system today. I wonder if the guy fucking gamed the system on the, the hashtag. Uh, Matt, Ger Matt Gwynn, that's his name, and his hashtag, or his, uh, um, uh, what do you call it, handle is Gwyn Matt. So that's fine. That's probably all you could get because it already was a Matt Gwynn. What's the that intro outro song you play on? Congratulations, uh, it's by Mr. Green. I use him a lot. He did my last incorrigible special. He did my first Comedy Central special. 
He does all the intros. He did uh, the Chank Smith album. If you don't know what Chank Smith is, Google Chank Smith. He's great. He has a lot of, he does, he's done a lot of shit better than that. I'm a joke, but he's fucking killer. Um, so that's, uh, that's your answer. Uh, I got another one here from Eric underscore Anson. E, he goes by. Hey, Crystalia, did you get any of the new Air Maxes? And what are the essential sneakers to go on tour with? I, uh, I love Air Max. Um, I've been on more of a, Adidas guy lately, and um, I wear these. I, I don't know. On, on tour, I don't bring my shoes because they're going to get all fucking dirty. I just bring, uh, I have these Converse that I wear that I like. They're like leather. And um, so that's my like tour shit. Sometimes I bring the black uh, Jordan ones. They're Cyber, the Cyber Mondays. I like those a lot. I like Jordans a lot still. Um, Jordans and Adidas, I like the NMDs. Some of the Reeboks I like. I like Reeboks, some of the Reeboks. Um, and that's what I wear pretty much. Um, those are my, uh, my, uh, my go-tos now. I'm gonna look at this more here. Congratulations, pod. Uh, uh, this is funny. Somebody asked me about DJ Khaled's fucking baby. Um, Oh, update on, uh, remember last, um, remember I was talking about Leo, my French friend? I fucking, uh, texted him like twice. I literally just texted him because people were coming up to me at, in North Carolina like, hey, what's up with Leo? I was like, I, I feel like he was a big hit. I was like, hey, saws, bro. They were saying, saws, bro. And I, I, at first I was like, what the fuck are you saying? And then I realized, oh, they, this is the fucking thing Leo texted me. I texted fucking Leo because first of all, I want to hang out with him. And second of all, he, so yesterday I wrote hang this week. By the way, he's a gangster dude because he, he it was on it it says red and he didn't write back. He doesn't give a fuck. That's so French to leave someone on red. And then today when I landed, I I, I was like this fucking motherfucker didn't text me back. So I wrote I tried this. I literally thought this would work. I wrote saws yay question mark. <laughs> and he didn't write back, but he didn't read that one yet. So maybe he's doing some French shit. He's probably eating a baguette. Or robbing a painting. Um, yeah, so I'll let you know what happens on the adventures of Leo. Um, all right. This guy writes, uh, his name is JL on it. Swag Lives Matter, which is very, a very fucking stupid and also pretty goddamn offensive handle. <laughs> um, definitely change it. For sure. Uh, yo, Chris Alia, just trying to game the system here. Check this little gem out real quick. And then the screenshot of somebody who tweeted, just a friendly reminder that you should call your animals by gender neutral or multiple pronouns. They can understand. Ken was in capital. And yes, there's another tweet. It is, it's possible for an animal to be trans. Your cat having a penis does not, got to stop. I'm sorry, I got to stop reading that. I almost shit all over. I just don't, I don't have time for that. You're a goddamn fucking parrot, okay? You're not trans. You're not trans, okay? You're not trans if you have wings. <laughs> All right? <laughs> Do you crawl? You don't got to worry about it. Hey, can you fly in the air? You're not concerned with gender neutral. Multiple pronouns. Um, here's a good one. Mario Partenope at BF5. Uh, you're, te you're teetering on the change it. You're teetering on a change. You're teetering on getting a change it, but you didn't get a change it because I actually think um, BBF5 is probably like maybe it means something. Gaming the system tonight. What's your least favorite thing about LA? That's a good fucking question. God, that's a good question because I love LA. I fucking love it. And I, you know what my least favorite thing about LA is? Is when people say they hate LA because that's another thing like kale. They just jump on the fucking bandwagon and they're like, oh, it's so hard to make friends here. No, you're a shitty person. <laughs> There's a lot of people everywhere. You're not in the fucking Gobi Desert. You can find people. 
And when there are a lot of people around, there are some good ones. So find those, and if you don't, you're a piece of shit, and go to the Gobi Desert. Okay? That's it. That's my fucking PSA. Uh, this is a funny one. How much money would it get take for somebody to get you to fly United? Blake Jones Music. Blake Jones, 1997. 90, That's a good name. Um, I, I don't know. To be honest, if I knew it was going to be on time, I, like if there were two flights the same, You'd have to pay me to take the fucking United one. You, and I'd probably, you'd probably have to be, uh, honestly, uh, uh, honest, honest answer. If, if I had to pay, like, okay, if one flight is $600 more and both are equal times, same airline, United and any other airline, $600 more, I would pay the $600 to not fly United. And I mean that. Fuck United. Um, so that's a good 600. There you go. Um, I'll answer one more. This is, this is, well. Somebody writes, Matthew Heath. Uh, his... Uh, name is Smish Smishikins. Eh, change it. Hey, man, you adult? You're a fucking adult. I'm looking at your profile picture right now. You got a full head of hair, which means you're past baby form. Change it. Smishikins? Hey, man. You can type. Change it. Thoughts on teenage girls calling their celebrity crushes daddy? Yeah. That's fucking weird, kinda to me. It's also when they what what's up with the zaddy, huh? People call me zaddy sometimes. Zam zaddy instead of damn daddy. The fuck is wrong with everything, man? Zam zaddy. See ya. Hey, am I fucking? Um, how old am I? When I say zam zaddy, how old do I sound? Zam zaddy. I sound like my dad trying to say something like. Hey, who's uh, Kendrick Lamar? That's how I sound when I say Zam Zaddy. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> All right, well, let's do one more and then I'll leave. Oh, that's a good one. I, I often think about this one. Um, Giano. And his handle is Giano, except there's a one instead of the I, because obviously Giano was taken. That's funny that he couldn't get it. And so he's like, I'll just pick, I'll just pick the one. Giano, is that Italian? I think. Uh, what do you think about people who put real in front of their name as their handle? That's pretty fucking annoying. Unless, now, you know what? It's even annoying if it is Kendrick Lamar, and you, you do need to find the real one. Because you'll have the blue check. If you just have the real fucking you know, and fucking reg regularton. Nah, don't have that. Don't have the re- real. Not good. Not good. Um. All right. Look, you guys. Fucking. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the night. We're almost in double digits, you guys. We're almost in double fucking digits. Getting these episodes done. And I couldn't have done it without my fucking babies, dude. You guys, see see you later, babies. You were listening to the Congratulations, the podcast. And this was the first ever ninth episode, and we all did it together, babies. Rate and review. Listen, before you turn this off or after you turn it off, it really helps if you rate and review it. And I'm being honest. It helps. It helps the length of the podcast, the life, the life of the podcast, I should say. It makes me want to do it more, to be totally fucking quite frank. I'm really busy, and I like doing this now. But if you're fucking showing love, I like doing it more. So help me help you, right? Help me help you. Like the fucking, what was the movie? Jerry Maguire. All right, I love some of you. So fucking thanks for listening. Congratulations, the podcast, Chris D'Elia. Uh, check my tour dates. 
Crystalia.com. I'm going to be in Australia. I'm going to be in um, Oxnard, California. I'm going to be all over the place. I think I'm just, I'm going to book Oakland soon. But I got a lot of places coming up. So check my website. Tweet me at Crystalia. And hashtag congratulations pod if you got your questions that you want me to answer. Thank you. See ya, my babies.